Okay, so um, welcome everybody to uh, this short seminar um, entitled uh, "How to Make Marketing Digital Marketing Work for You." My name's uh, My name's Alan Jowan, and uh, I'll be your host for the um, uh, for the next half an hour. Um, uh, I'm the marketing director at a small consultancy firm called uh, Collier Picard. We're an independent CRM consultancy and operate uh, in similar ways to uh, to other professional services companies with business development people, uh, fee earners, and uh, technical support people uh, in our uh, in our back office. Um, my marketing manager Doug Taylor um, is also. Uh, on this call, and uh, we'll be able to chip in with answers to questions and uh, detail of some aspects of um, our digital marketing program that he's responsible for executing uh, when we get to the end of the uh, when we get to the end of the slide deck. So uh, let me start off by telling you what's happened as a result of our digital marketing strategy. Um, over the course of the last twelve months, we've increased the number of organic hits on our website, uh, hits of which result from organic searches in Google and other search engines by fourfold. Um, the nature of uh, the way that people contact us has also changed uh, as a result of our, as a direct result of our digital marketing strategy in that we now get um, uh, clients, uh, target clients calling us with warm inquiries. They've already determined that we have the expertise to help them, and they're, uh, they're calling to ratify that what, uh, uh, what they think is the services we can offer are actually uh, the case. And uh, this is a complete turnaround from the, from the way our business operated two years previously. Um, over the course of the last 18 months, we've acquired, acquired new clients as a direct result of our inbound marketing strategy, our digital marketing strategy, and that's been across all spectrums of uh, business areas that we work in, financial services, central and local government, and uh, commercial businesses. So the case study that we're going to talk through uh, this afternoon um, has this timeline to it. Um, we've moved from a rather conventional product and uh, professional services oriented uh, approach to the market with uh, brochure wear as websites and um, outbound email marketing, outbound direct mail um, into the last couple of years where we formulated the digital marketing strategy. We completely changed the way that we uh, used content management systems in terms of websites. Uh, we've adopted a structured inbound marketing uh, strategy, uh, a strategy which helps us get found more easily on the web, uh, and we have some software uh, that, uh, some inbound marketing software that helps us do that. And during the course of this year, we've been able to extend the reach of what's uh, uh, what's been happening as a result of this digital marketing strategy, and improve the targeting of um, uh, of our messages. Um, next year, we're going to. Uh, take the next step in our digital strategy into um, uh, social media. Uh, at this point in time, we've done some experimentation with LinkedIn and with Twitter, and we'll capitalize that on next year. Um, we'll, we'll also look at Facebook, although we haven't really played around with that particular uh, arena as yet. Um, there's a question mark on 2014. I think the, uh, the whole world of digital marketing is a very fluid, very dynamic world at the moment. And so we're going to wait until we get into next year and experiment with social media before we determine exactly what our priorities will be uh, two years out, uh, one and a half, two years out from now. Okay, so what has a digital marketing strategy done for us? It, it's fundamentally um, enabled us to shift the emphasis of the way that we approach the market. Um, previous, uh, prior to, um, uh, prior to. Uh, embarking on this strategy, we had a conventional domain, www.colliapicard, which is a promotional website. Um, as part of our new digital strategy, we now have a subdomain, which is info.colliapicard, which is exclusively educational. It doesn't promote our services. It doesn't promote any of the um, products that we supply and support. Um, it's entirely a tips, tricks, advice, and authoritative uh, location for information. Um, 
to support that, we've moved the static website environment that we had into very dynamic content, and we're updating our web websites uh, and our blogs on a weekly and often on a daily basis. And we've moved away from printed brochures into getting our message out to market through blogs and through ebooks. So the result of that is that we're, we're now very able to articulate our experience, provide top tips, uh, and uh, create some kind of uh, thought leadership position for ourselves in the market. Um, uh, this was uh, contentious at the time we started on this, uh, uh, on this strategy because obviously it involves, uh, uh, it involves divulging some of our intellectual property, some of the methods that we use to create success within our field. Uh, hitherto had been um, uh, methods which weren't shared with clients until such time as they'd actually engaged us and commissioned us to do some work. In order to support the shift in emphasis, we have to make some of our IP uh, public. We have to uh, give something away in order to demonstrate our expertise. And that's displayed itself in terms of websites um, with um, a, a detailed breakdown of uh, the way we approach the market, the services we offer. Um, but every part of our website is now linked to a specific call to action, which invites you to not just read what's there, but to engage with it as well. Um, the, uh, uh, the subdomain, the, the blog, is structured in a similar layout, and we post to our blog at least once a week, and we do that consistently uh, in order to get the best recognition from the search engines. Um, our job is obviously to make Google and the other search engines believe that we're a genuine contributor to um, information on our subject matter um, and therefore a good place to direct people to if they're searching for information uh, about CRM or any of the other subjects in which we, uh, in which we deal. Uh, we've taken a lot of time over our, um, uh, over our blog and uh, we catalog our blog so whilst you're on our blog pages, you can, uh, uh, you can search all the history um, by tag, by subject title, um, and the, uh, uh, the blog page tells you how many posts there are related to each of the subjects that we've, uh, that we've provided advice and guidance about. Um, our blog page and, uh, and other pages on our website also invite you to follow us through um, the experimenting that we've done so far in social media. Um, but also to subscribe so that you get newsletters and um, other communications coming directly to you. Um, on this page, you can also see a YouTube um, logo, and uh, we have started adding to our blog now uh, video clips, which are top tips and key messages delivered in two, two and a half and three minute videos, and the content of the uh, video is then uh, transcribed longhand into, uh, uh, into our blog so that it becomes searchable by the search engine buyers. Um, having a uh, 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 blogging strategy and a social media strategy and providing all this um, educational information on the website is one thing, but to simply sit back and wait for people to find us through organic searches probably isn't going to bring us as much traffic as much target client uh, inquiry traffic as we would like. Um, we therefore support our um, educational positioning and our inbound marketing uh, uh, thinking with conventional outbound uh, marketing techniques which are designed to drive people into our educational content and hence to our calls to action and hence to tell us who they are as they download material from our sites. So uh, blogging is the, uh, uh, is the piece that we've been talking about, and I'll come back to outbound marketing uh, in a second. Um, during the course of our blogging, we've uh, worked out some key rules, um, and uh, I'd like to share those with you if you're considering, if, you're all, if you already have a digital marketing strategy or you're considering adopting one, you should consider these things. Um, take a lot of time to understand what your clients and your target clients search for when they're looking for information that's going to help them with their business. 
um, we spent at the beginning of our strategy in, uh, uh, in inbound marketing, we spent a lot of time searching uh, websites, uh, looking at people who operate in the same field as us, and uh, what messages they were, they were taking to market, um, looking at how we would uh, differentiate ourselves from those messages and create not just keywords for search engines to pick up, but key phrases that might be the type that somebody would search into Google when they're looking for some information. Um, those key phrases become the titles and the content of, uh, of our blog posts. Um, we found uh, that uh, the search engines will, will recognize quality and relevance in blog posts and other pages on, uh, on websites if the content and, and, uh, and the title of an article are related. So the algorithms that search this content at the moment, if they can pick up three or four references to the title within, uh, within a post, then they will decide that uh, they will determine that that is a relevant piece and will score it highly. Um, if you mention uh, your title in the content less times, then um, uh, it's, unrec it's unrecognizable as being uh, valid content that talks to the title from a search engine point of view. If you mention it more times, it looks like hard, hard sell and uh, you'll be downgraded by, uh, by Google certainly as a result of doing that. Um, we found that uh, posts need to be in the four to 800 word range. Um, this is because Google <coughs> thinks it's not necessarily a serious article if it's less than 400 words, and therefore we take that as uh, a rule for building all our blog content. Um, posting uh, is, uh, is a regular thing for us. We post, uh, we post once a week at least, and uh, the search engines actually recognize that uh, you're, you're a regular, frequent, and consistent contributor, and therefore rank you more highly as a result of that. So the fourfold increase in organic searches that we've experienced over the last year, year and a half, um, that improvement in our search engine optimization has come exclusively from blogging through being clever about the way we identify the key phrases that we write about and using some of the rules that you can see on this page to make sure that we present ourselves in a way whereby Google can identify us as being a valid source of information. Once people have found you, you need to go through uh, the exercise of uh, finding out who people are. You now want the, um, uh, the visitor to your site to engage with you. And therefore, you need to make content compelling, but you also need to make calls to action compelling. Um, these, um, uh, these need to be as simple as they possibly can. It needs, you need to take people through a logical progression, and you need to establish and build on trust uh, in terms of the information that you're providing and the quality of the information that you're providing to people so that they come back, so that they revisit, so that they, as you can see on the uh, slide example here, so maybe their first, uh, first engagement with you is to download an e-book. And having read the e-book, the content is good enough that they come back and they say, yes, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll click and um, apply for, uh, register for a free consultancy session and so the engagement uh, takes place in obvious next steps and in a, in, in a way that's not intimidating. Uh, more tips on blogs, we found that uh, you can get a lot of uh, linking into your website uh, by, uh, by cultivating guest bloggers and there's an example of one which was posted in February this year. Uh, with a, um, uh, an authority in data, data cleansing, and data quality. Um, we um, have guest blogged on other people's sites as well and use those as inbound links to our own site, which of course helps with, uh, with SEO. Uh, we like to cultivate uh, bloggers in all the markets that we work in rather than trying to be specific. And in that respect, uh, as a marketing team, we can't do that alone. We need input from our um, uh, from our fee earners, from our professionals, from the business development people who are talking to, uh, talking to our clients and our target clients all the time to find out what they're talking about, what's hot, 
what's relevant, what kind of searching, what kind of surfing they're doing uh, when uh, when they're sitting in front of their browser, so that we can identify new key phrases and write to those. Um, this is without doubt an iterative process. You need to um, identify where you have strengths and where you have weaknesses in the approach, uh, keep improving things, and keep changing things around in order to work out which, uh, uh, which approaches will work best for you in the chosen markets uh, uh, that you're in. So one of the things that we do is we attempt to um, publish information in an outbound way, the time we post blogs, uh, the time we send follow-up emails from, um, uh, from people downloading ebooks. We try them at different times of day, on different days of the week, to establish a pattern of when you get the best open rates, when you get the best click-through rates, and we use this to feedback to make sure that uh, future posts take, it, uh, take advantage of the knowledge that we're acquiring as we keep refining our approach. Um, I mentioned that we support our blogging and uh, our other um, get found, our other inbound activities with outbound marketing. Um, we did a, uh, a large survey of the email marketing services market last year um, and experimented with each of the email marketing service tools uh, that are shown on the right-hand side of that page, um, looking particularly at how easy it is to design um, uh, 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 new outbound mail, how easy it is to create templates, um, how easy it is to link to our CRM database where segmentation and targeting takes place, um, how easy it is to analyze the information, uh, the responses to our campaigns, uh, particularly opens and click-throughs, uh, but also bounces and unsubscribes which we need to take back into CRM for um, permanent updates to databases. Um, we are experimenting with uh, permissions in outbound marketing whereby somebody unsubscribing to our newsletter or to a nurturing campaign is invited to go to a preference center so that they can unsubscribe se selectively um, uh, by uh, tick boxes. Uh, for example, um, did you want to unsubscribe from our CRM newsletters, from our digital marketing newsletters? Uh, from our top tips campaigns uh, and so on. Um, uh, this way, hopefully, we can we can stop some people blanket unsubscribing um, in such a way that we're not allowed to communicate them, uh, with them any longer. Um, our chosen tool uh, in in this particular world uh, provides us with um, uh, with very good analytics. And here's an example of uh, analysis that we get from uh, uh, from outbound email campaigns. Uh, the reason I put this detailed slide up is not for you to read all the information that's on there, but uh, to look at the bar chart, the green bar chart on the right-hand side, which shows that an increasing percentage of people open our emails on iPhones. Um, that means that you need to get increasingly smart about the way you design your outbound emails in the first place. If you've designed them for Outlook with large banners um, where pictures need to be downloaded, it might be that somebody reading that on an iPhone can see nothing but the blank space with the little X in the top left-hand corner, and therefore they pick up no sense of uh, what you're trying to communicate and delete without reading any of the text that was in your email at all. And um, this, uh, uh, this uh, figure, the 18.4% uh, iPhone figure that you can see there is increasing, not, not decreasing. As part of our outbound strategy, we also use Google AdWords as a method of driving people to our web content uh, and the um, uh, content in our, uh, in our blogs. Um, and we've adopted the same philosophy in uh, in campaigning with key phrases, keywords and key phrases um, uh, that we have with our blogging. So we're always looking for the phrase that it is an exact match for the kind of searching that people were doing in the first place. Um, when you're uh, putting phrases together in your ad Google AdWord campaign boxes, you need to think uh, what Google's after, uh, not just what you're trying to achieve. Um, Google wants to deliver 
relevant uh, ads back to match somebody's inquiry. If it delivers ads back, if it puts an impression of your ad on that search page and nobody clicks it, then it wasn't relevant and it deems that it's, it deems that it itself, Google has failed itself to satisfy that searcher's request and therefore it did a bad job. So you always have to remember that um, click-through rates are the most important thing to Google when you're uh, preparing AdWords. Uh, you can see a click-through rate of 4.17% uh, uh, um, there that we've managed to improve by using some of our inbound marketing thinking, our key phrase thinking, and applying it to AdWords. We had a click-through rate of 0.9% uh, of before we started this work, and we've grown that by over fourfold by using our uh, inbound marketing thinking to the way that campaign catchphrases appear when um, Google throws up an impression of our ads. And this is driving more traffic back to our site, whereby hopefully we can uh, wow them with our content and, um, uh, and our calls to action, our compelling calls to action, make people click through and tell us who they are. So these concepts all link together in a, uh, in a digital marketing strategy and uh, form a closed loop whereby um, people finding us for the first time at the top of this honeycomb, either through our inbound marketing techniques or through our pay-per-click techniques, will arrive at landing pages which is specific to the content that drove them to us in the first place. This enables us to measure the effectiveness of the uh, campaigns that we're pushing out, both the inbound campaigns and the outbound campaigns. And when people click on our calls to action, they will, um, uh, they will give us their name, address, company, and email address. They're the only four things that we, uh, that we ask for, first name, last name, company, and email. And that will populate our CRM database. Uh, we then have Google Analytics and other analytics within our, um, uh, within our inbound marketing world, which will allow us to measure web visits, visits analyze the results, uh, and go through a cycle of improving the data quality that we have in CRM, which feeds uh, the targeting uh, that we uh, embark upon within, uh, within email marketing and therefore um, improves the effectiveness of the messaging that we're delivering in outbound sense to people who've already contacted us. It's a permission marketing driven system. Uh, the more people tell us about themselves, uh, the more they visit our sites, the more they download, the bigger the picture we create of that person, what they like, what they don't like, what they'll read, what they won't, what they'll click through, what they, what they, what they won't. And this, is, uh, uh, this has enabled us to improve the quality uh, of our outbound marketing. Our monthly newsletters are now opened by more people and read by more people than they were uh, before we embarked on this, um, uh, on this strategy. Um, so all of this has led to the, um, the organic search uh, statistics that I mentioned at the outset of, um, uh, of this uh, seminar. And I think that um, uh, a fourfold increase in that 12-month period is, uh, is a good standard of uh, improvement by, by anybody's standards. Um, the next ventures uh, that we are embarking upon in our digital strategy are in the uh, social area, as I mentioned. Uh, we, we, one of our, um, uh, one of our um, CRM products is geared specifically to legal CRM and to the professional services world, uh, and we have a LinkedIn discussion group there. We also join other people's discussion groups. Um, unfortunately, at this point in time, um, contributing to discussion groups is, is very hard. It's a, it's, it's a big job and we will have to consider exactly how we're going to handle that engagement with, um, uh, with LinkedIn groups um, as we move into the 2013 part of our strategy. Um, Twitter similarly also uh, requires, uh, requires time um, and, uh, uh, and at the moment, we think that in the professional services market, the community that uses Twitter is still small. However, 
it's a very quick and effective way of outbound marketing in terms of driving people to new content on your website uh, or new material that's been uh, uh, that's been posted on your blog. So uh, more on that subject next year. Um, so I've got three slides to um, uh, to wrap up the um, uh, the. Uh, messages that we've been delivering here about our digital marketing and how it works and they come in the form of top tips so the first page is the lessons uh, uh, the lessons that we've learned in, in dealing with um, with Google um, we have become much more aware of uh, its mission Google works for itself not for you so uh, if you are always thinking whenever you put a blog out, whenever you put a, uh, a Google AdWords uh, pay-per-click ad out, if you're thinking, will this help Google answer, answer some questions and deliver better click-through rates, thereby making Google's reputation uh, better, if you think that way, then uh, in order to make that happen, you have to research what people are searching for in the first place. And that's the piece that's uh, that's a good lesson to learn from uh, uh, from the experiences we've had uh, over the last two years. So blogging is for us is the way to get found. Uh, it's it's provided us with search engine optimization without having to pay expensive um, technical specialists to come in and do detailed uh, website work uh, under the SEO banner. One of the other lessons that we've learned is that uh, blog content can be reused. You can uh, create, one, uh, uh, create one piece of content. It's maybe four, five, six hundred words long, as I uh, in indicated earlier. It should be. Um, it's got a long tail. Uh, it's got a long tail uh, key phrase um, that's in its title and mentioned in its uh, in, it, in its content, um, and that can be then uh, part of the content in a monthly newsletter. It could become uh, content that provides a press release. Um, it could become content that you can reuse three, four times over in order to increase the uh, uh, presence of your messages around the web without you having to do uh, three, four times the amount of work. Um, we've been uh, doing a lot of research into um, uh, into the psychology of landing pages and what makes it easy for people and what doesn't. And um, uh, there's a book that I would commend to you written by Steve Krug, uh, K-R-U-G. It's available on uh, Amazon. The book's actually called Make It Easy For Me. And um, we found that uh, the advice guidance and the applied psychology analytics that are going on in that way of thinking do actually improve um, click-through rates on landing pages if you follow some of the rules of, um, uh, of decluttering uh, pages, making the message that you're delivering very simple and making it very easy for people to, to engage with you through clicks, click-throughs being on the right-hand side of the page, for example. And choose tools. Uh, we've we've um, uh, become addicted to the analytics that we get from our uh, uh, from our marketing and uh, and the people who click through and download from our website. Um, the more we analyze, the better the quality of the information we get to inform the next series of subjects that we write about. And uh, the better uh, is the improvement in the quality in, that we capture in our CRM database, which improves the effectiveness of our outbound marketing. So those are some of the things that uh, uh, that have worked for us, which we're glad to share with you today. And here are some of the things that don't work. Um, if we're going down a route of a digital marketing strategy using blogging for um, search engine optimization um, and uh, starting to get into social media, the marketing team can't do it alone. The people that are engaged with the uh, with your clients, with your target clients, with the industries in which you uh, provide uh, uh, services. Um, they're the people that know what the buzz is in the market and they need to uh, uh, provide content and contribute to this growing educational pool that you're building up in your web presence. Um, uh, don't allow uh, these contributors to choose the content for themselves. You need to direct them to, uh, to look for content that's under broad headings that you've determined 
are creating the right click-through rates in AdWords or in your blogs or um, uh, information that's being um, uh, fed back to you after people have downloaded ebooks or opinion pieces or whatever. So, um, uh, so uh, engage other people in the organization in terms of the content, but don't let them choose the content. Direct them in where you're looking for content to contribute to the coherent closed group, uh, closed group strategy. Um, make sure that whatever, whatever you post in your uh, web presence, that the title, the, the tags, and the text all uh, relate. If they're not aligned, uh, some of the algorithms that search web pages won't identify them as being good, strong content, and they won't improve your search engine optimization. Um, grabbing a few hours here and there doesn't work in, uh, in this digital marketing world. You need to have somebody that's focused on it, it's their job, and they have time and priorities. And uh, we also think that, uh, uh, that splitting inbound marketing and outbound marketing and all the nurturing uh, aspects of uh, target client or prospect nurturing that surround that, they can't be isolated activities. It has to be a closed loop. And if, if those uh, different tasks are split across different people, they need to collaborate as a team. Uh, and finally, I alluded to this earlier on, uh, we had one unexpected result from, uh, uh, from our digital strategy, which was because our Google AdWords campaigns are so quick to set up and measure click-through rates, and they're so, it's so easy to put in uh, A-B testing on key phrases, whereby um, every alternate impression of an ad going onto a uh, search page has a different title, uh, A, then the next time it crops up B, then A, then B, and so on. Um, you get to uh, learn very quickly which catchphrases, which, uh, which key phrases will uh, uh, attract higher click-through rates and which won't. And that becomes your KPI for measuring your success in AdWords, but it then informs the titles that you need your, uh, uh, your blog content and your calls to action to address because you know that those are hot, uh, uh, hot things in the market that people will look on. So an, uh, an unexpected result for us is that using Google AdWords actually informs our inbound marketing thinking, and we've used that to great effect. Um, I've used up my half hour, uh, which was the allotted time for this, uh, uh, for this session. Um, thank you for coming and joining the, uh, uh, the session. If you have any questions, you can ping them to me by email. Thank you very much for attending, and um, hope that uh, you can join a future Collier Picard webinar, um, or in the meantime, uh, visit our blog at uh, info.colierpicard.co.uk. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.